I'm on the, the balcony of my hotel room in Tourist Bottle now. Uh, it's actually the Diniesta behind me. Uh, yeah, I did a lot of canoeing yesterday. I finally finished actually about uh, 9 o'clock in the evening. It was already getting dark, so I was absolutely knackered. Um, I, yeah, I'd cut, canoed over 12 hours. I canoed over 12 hours yesterday. Um, I did 36 miles, which is by far the longest distance either of us done, has done on this trip. So I was exhausted. It was really hard to find a hotel in, in Bender. Um, and then I ran some really nice um, Transnistrian people and they, they spoke a little bit of English and said, yeah, I can, we'll show you the way to the hotel, which is really good. They were young and they, they were like, oh, what's the reputation of Transnistria outside the country? So it's like, well, you know, organised crime, people trafficking, all that good stuff. I went to Tourist Bowl straight this morning because it's, it's, I didn't bother getting the canoe out again because it's about 10 miles by river and 5 miles by road and I had to pack the canoe out last night. Uh, plus the fact I'm absolutely shattered after yesterday's canoeing. And I think I'm going to have to go back um, tomorrow actually because I don't have enough money. Um, <laughs> I've bought myself some, some Transnistrian rubles which are very funny. Um, but uh, no, the, it's, it's all a little bit more expensive than I expected, so I'm going to have to go back to Kishinev because of course I can't get cash out here because the economic blockade means there's no cash machines. Right, I'm back in Kishinev now. Um, I left Tiraspol this morning and I have to say that generally my experience of uh, Transniesta was overall quite positive. Um, I mean, obviously it's got a very bad reputation and they say, um, you know, you're going to have to bribe people, the police all the time, uh, loads of bureaucracy, you know, it's, it's a crumbling communist state run by a you know, autocratic regime. But actually, I, I found the people fairly friendly, not, not at all hostile to the fact that I was an Englishman. I'm actually going out transgenist, probably one of the few people that has managed this, I'm actually going out without having to bribe anyone the entirety of my stay. In fact, the only experience of crime I did have on the Diesta I mentioned was uh, the bandits, uh, and ironically, I suppose, they were, they were Moldovan, very definitely Moldovan, um, they told me, um, and uh, that, that's a complete contrast with what you expect. Everyone said, you know, trans Diniesta side is far more dangerous, you want to stay in Moldova. Well, no, they, actually, I was a far more danger from Moldovan bandits, not trans -Nestrians. We're currently in Zatoka, which is um, a Black Sea uh, resort in Ukraine. And we got here this morning at 10 a.m., having left at 12 a.m. last night, so 10 hour bus journey. We eat all the gold, money burns our souls. That's the way it goes, and the life we chose. The bullet is home. <laughs> to get a gun to shoot out the man in charge of the land. Here we are at the mouth of the Dniester River, where it enters the Black Sea. Um, so we basically come from its source in the Carpathians, or close to its source. We're now back in Manchester. It's been some time since we got back actually. And we've had a little bit of time to reflect on the trip. Yeah, it uh, seems a world away now. There's many things that we didn't get the camera out for that perhaps we should have. Um, but those things at the time seem so spontaneous and so instant you don't, you don't think about 
getting a camera out to film them. And there were other things that it just wasn't possible to film. And perhaps things that we shouldn't have filmed, but we did. <laughs> yeah, too much alcohol. No more to be said. Actually, I was talking about filming undercover, but yeah, that was oh, yeah. yeah. I think there are always things you'll do differently. No trip's perfect, and there's no way our trip was perfect, but I think what went wrong almost made the trip better. When we were planning it, everyone was like, yeah, you're having a laugh, you're never going to do that. Um, but we just bought an inflatable canoe and we went. And like, we, you know, by no means any kind of physical Superman. Um, but, you know, you just, you get stuck in and you can, you can do these things. Uh, yeah, that point was nowhere near as interesting as I realised. You know, yeah. When people ask me about the trip, I say a handful of things. Um, you know, I say we got a canoe stolen, we almost drowned, we broke the canoe, uh, we were detained for eight hours by border officials, and all those things are true, and yeah, they're interesting, uh, and that's, that's what I tell people, that's what they want to hear, but I think for us it was, it was a lot more than that, there were plenty of little things, not, it, it wasn't all about the big events, they were interesting and unforgettable, but so many other things as well, so many little points that just made the whole thing a, a really good experience. I just want something to be It's like, it's on the edge of my brain. You sound like you're it's advertising nice. uh, for yeah, the nice. Ukrainian tourist board. Oh. Uh, got the coo canoe kitted out, we got all... Anything could go in this one. One very drunk, but two a very generous fellow. And uh, very nice. I know. You gave it. Special French tea. Just knowing it's on makes it worse. So where are we, Andrew? <laughs> I was a talker. And, uh, and what have we just been doing? <laughs> Swallow my chest. <laughs> uh, here time stops, uh, stops and here is infinity of time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it all.